Hello, everybody. Tracy, Mrs. J Dog Flanagan with you here today. I'm the co founder and senior vice president at J Dog Brands. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast, powered by the J Dog Foundation. Our podcast gives veterans, male spouses, active duty members, military family members, and patriotic military supporters a voice in the veteran space to speak about their service, how they're affecting their communities post service, and they share with me a tactical treasure that has shaped them in their journey military career, business, or life. Today, I am so pleased to have with me Greg and Katie Butler. Greg Butler is an Army veteran who served as an infantry officer and Army Ranger for 14 years in the Pennsylvania Army National Guard and deployed to Iraq in 2008. He enlisted in the Army shortly after 9-11, retiring with the rank of Major. He also worked as a Pennsylvania State Trooper for 15 years before retiring to establish Mainline Armory, where he is the owner. Greg graduated from Widener University with a Bachelor of Science in Business. Katie Butler is an Army Iraq War veteran who served as an Army Intelligence Officer, having received her commission through ROTC at Temple University. She served 10 years in the Pennsylvania National Guard and met Greg during Hurricane Katrina. Katie is currently a marketing executive for a Fortune 500 consumer goods company and serves on the board of directors for the Council for Responsible Nutrition, the Trade Association for Vitamins, Minerals, and Dietary Supplements. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Temple University and an Executive MBA from Villanova University. Greg and Katie have been married for 18 years and have two children. They founded Mainline Armory to change the narrative around gun ownership in their community and promote responsible gun ownership. Hello, Katie and Greg. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you so much for your service to our country. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, you. Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm really excited for our discussion today. We have a lot to talk about. Um, so I'd like to get started, and I'll... Um, uh, Katie, I'll start with you. What inspired you to join the Army? Yeah, um, for me, it was actually a science teacher in high school that told me about the military. I was looking at colleges, and uh, my family couldn't afford a university. We, I'm a first generation uh, in the United States, so my family comes from the Dominican Republic. And he told me all about the military, the, the path to getting a commission, and it just seemed like an interesting option for me. So I ended up doing it. I thought I was only going to do three years <laughs> and I loved it and stayed for 10. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, Greg, what about you? What inspired you to join the army? I heard they had great food and <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, it was, it, it literally was, it was nine 11. So I, I was a junior in college at nine 11. I wasn't, I was not in ROTC. I wound up being in, um, OCS um, officer. I went through the OCS way of uh, getting my commission, but uh, 9-11 really impacted me. And then I saw what happened and I was just chomping at the bit to graduate and then, and then join and which, which I did. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot joined after 9-11. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's really awesome. So um, I'll ask both of you, the um, same question. So Greg, I'll start with you this time. So is there a particular aspect or moment of your service that stood out as impactful in a positive way? I mean, to narrow it down to one thing, I mean, there, uh, I, it, it's really, t I mean, my whole deployment just changed my life. Um, be, serving with, with men that I consider brothers, um, mm -hmm you know, that would die for me and I would die for them really showed me it, it's, it's interesting, you know, when you're in war, you're, you're seeing the worst part of humanity, but people don't realize that you see the best side of humanity too. guys looking out for each other in the worst case, in the worst scenarios. Um, that really changed my perspective on life. So um, I would say it's the whole deployment to Iraq uh, really um, changed the, my outlook on life and the way I live today. Wow, that's amazing. Um, that's very interesting point that you made is seeing the worst, but also the best in right. your fellow uh, brothers and, and service members that were alongside of you. Uh, that's really amazing. <laughs> Katie, how about you? Is there is there one moment uh, that stood yeah. out as impactful as being positive for you? Yeah, I wouldn't say just like Greg, that there was a particular moment. 
But I think for me being a woman, particularly, um, I served in mainly infantry uh, brigades and units. So um, learning really how to stand up for yourself. I don't think I would be the leader that I am today, the person that I am today, had I not had that military experience. I think for women, it, it allows you, puts you in a challenging uh, situation where you have to learn to stand up for, you, for yourself. You have to learn to be heard in the conversation. So I think it's a, that for me was a pivotal moment and I think has definitely transpired to me taking leadership outside of the military. Right. You know, women used to not be infantry. So, it, you know, it's amazing that our, our women are uh, on that line, uh, you know, yeah. today. So, um, yeah, that, that's amazing. Awesome stuff, guys. Now you guys are, so at Greg, after you retired as a state trooper and uh, you guys decided to found Mainline Armory. So what was that thought process like? How did that come about? What was that journey like? So I actually had no intention of being a business owner. I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Uh, I totally was in the mindset, I'm going to retire. I'm going to wear Tommy Bahama shirts every day. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be a stay-at-home husband and life was going to be just peachy. Um, but what happened was when 20, when 2020 happened, when, when COVID hit mm. um, and the riots, you know, the, the Floyd riots in, the, in that summer, right? The, the, everybody thought it was like end of days when, especially when COVID hit and it was shut down, everybody thought it was end of days. So guns were just everybody was buying guns they thought they were gonna have to defend themselves from looters and stuff like that yeah so there was a huge spike in firearm sales and there was like nothing left like if there was something on the sh there was never anything on the shelf it would be gone as soon as it came in so yeah. the way i got into it my, my father was um a, a an ffl a federal firearms licensee what that is anytime you purchase a gun online or across state lines <clears throat> and it gets shipped to you it can't just go to your house it, it has to go to someone who can do your atf paperwork your background check make sure everything's in compliance and they the atf licenses licenses people to do that so my dad was one of those and he's been doing it for at that point for like ten, nine ten years right um so much so that he originally did that as a side business because he was a painter but he wound up just giving up painting and doing that full time because it wound up growing into a good business. So to give you a perspective as how busy he got when COVID hit, soon as the, the lockdown was released and people it, like people realize what's going on, he went from about 150 transactions a month on a busy month to about 450 wow. a month. And that was for a year straight. So at That's the amazing. time, yeah, it was wild. So at the time, I was still a state trooper. And he, I remember I remember the phone call. My dad called me up just exhausted. And he said, Greg, I need your help. I, I can't do this. I'm, I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm going to have a heart attack. So I came over and, and for a year straight, pretty much every minute that I wasn't working, I was over there doing like transfers, paperwork, everything to help him out. And it was around the, the the time of the riots that I mean I was when you transfer a firearm or purchase a firearm, you there's a section where you have to put your employer, CEOs, doctors, lawyers, very accomplished, you know, intelligent people firearms, and the first thing they would do, some of them, the first thing they do when I give them a firearm is they would go and look right down the barrel, oh and. My gosh. And yeah. anyone who's a, who owns a firearm or even people who don't own a firearm sends chills down your spine. Oh yeah. And, and I realize it's not that they're dumb. They're just ignorant to firearms. They right. nobody's ever trained them. So as I'm doing the paperwork and they do stuff like that, I'll ask like, Hey, where are you going? Where are you going to get trained on this? And they would say, Oh, well, you know, I'm going to watch some YouTube videos and go to the range. And the problem is the only range in our area OK, closed down to only members. They were selling guns to everybody, but right. you couldn't go on the range unless you were a member. So people are like, all right, wow. well, I'll be a, I'll be a member. And they're like, nope, no new members. 
So there was literally nowhere in Delaware County in, or around the area where they could go shoot and, and train and get some lessons. Right. So I wound up explaining to them, I said, you don't learn to drive a car on YouTube, right? And they, they would take pause and I'd say, you know, you could watch all the YouTube videos you want on driving, but until you get in that car and you feel the momentum, you know, steering input, gas, brake, and someone actually teach you, you can't drive. Like you, you can't drive. Yeah, you can watch a video, get in the car. Doesn't mean you're not, you're going to know how to, you might crash, right? So I explained that to them. Look, you can't just watch a video on how to shoot a gun because the moment you get out on the range and pull that trigger for the first time, everything changes you know right. there's you have to train for that and i would always like i wound up giving like business cards for a, a fellow trooper that was doing that instruction and he was crushed during that period oh, he was right. just i mean everybody yeah. was doing training so it I, it was one summer night i i after being at my dad's house the whole day i came back to and to, back home and i was talking to katie and i kind of said it in like I don't want to say in jest, but just kind of half-heartedly. I say we we should op we should open up a, a range. Like we we would kill it around here. And you know, Katie, the businesswoman that she is, I mean, she knew nothing about the industry, but right. she was a businesswoman, and she was like, yeah, yeah, no, it's an absolute like we this community needs that. And like, and we knew very, at the beginning, it wasn't just going to be a gun range. It's going to be a place where you train people, like where the where you could teach people to be responsible gun owners. Okay. Like that's our big focus, responsible gun ownership. Right, Cause right. nobody was doing that. They were, they had the field of dreams mentality. If you build it, they will come. And like, that just doesn't work anymore in, in this. And that, that's why there's some that are to this day are selling and closing because they, they, they don't have a, a plan. They just opened it up and said, Hey, come and shoot. And it's a value brand. Like everybody, Hey, let, I'll do it as cheap as possible to get people in. And it's just, you can't, it, you can't do that in this business. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're, you're right there. There isn't a whole lot of places to go for lessons in, right. in, in our area of Delaware, Chester, Montgomery County. Um, Katie, what did, uh, what did you think? You, 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 you were on board right away. Yeah, I mean, for me as a marketing executive and somebody who's worked on a lot of categories, a lot of different markets, there's a huge opportunity when you launch a business, if you can actually outreach the consumers that are sitting on the side sidelines. So what I saw in that industry was every range that I personally had been to, and I had served in the military, I was not unfamiliar with firearms, the entire experience felt very uncomfortable to me. Um, it was very tactically focused. It was very dark. It didn't make you feel comfortable. So right. I knew there was a huge opportunity to really grow the market if we were able to make the entire experience much more comforting, much more welcoming, and really be able to speak to all types of demographics. I think the industry today suffers a lot from really speaking to the core and individuals who have previously purchased firearms and not really talking to people who may be interested and you know just haven't taken that next step. So a lot of the things that we do at Mainline Armory is we try to build programs, services, and offerings for individuals who are considering it so that they can do so in a responsible way. Right, right. I can see your touch. Jerry and I visited the armory and obviously very impressed with what we saw there. And um, I, I could definitely see your hand. You had a whole section for the woman's concealed carry apparel, which I love because there's not a whole lot of options out there for women. Um, you know, we wear, we like to wear cute clothing and a lot of it is not necessarily baggy t-shirts it's you know so how are you going to conceal how are you going to conceal carry unless you have some sort of purse or something and so i yeah so i love how you had just that whole little section you know yeah. dedicated to women's concealed carry apparel it was awesome um, Jerry, yeah. Jerry was looking at me and saying, oh, no, 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 come on, let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so um, when, when I, when I was, uh, when we were researching this, like, we didn't just, like, do a, it's obviously, you've been there, it's not like we just open up a lemonade stand, like, hey, we want to sell right. guns, let's do it. We did our research, we got a consultant, 
but I actually traveled around the country and I went to some of like the best known ranges because this isn't like we're not we're not reinventing the wheel. This concept is working around the country. It's just yeah. never around this area. So right. when I would go to some of these other ranges and if I was training at another range, I'd always go and check out like the women's section because we knew that we were going to focus on women and new, you know, young professionals, people who don't, who never had a gun before. Right. And they would, Oh yeah, we have a women's section and like, it's over in the corner and it's got dust on it. And it's got all cheetah print, you yeah, know? Right. And, and it's just like, it's apparent, it's clear that a guy designed that for women. So it was very important to us that not only does Katie get involved, but when we had our designer, it's a female designer. We right. didn't want a guy designer to be like, oh, this is what like all the, you know, no, we wanted it to look, guys are going to shoot wherever. We wanted it to be comfortable for women, welcoming to women right. and, and right. young professionals. Like yeah. even everything we do, we, we hold your hand the entire way. We even offer a free class that where we talk about your first gun purchase, like it's just walk in, you sign up and, and like it, it gives you the steps to start your gun ownership, your responsible gun ownership journey. And that starts with understanding, like, what's the right gun for me? Like, where do I? And at the end of that class, it's what training's available? What classes right. should I take? How should I how should I grow and, and become better? But all that stuff was thought out because that is the demographic we're trying to grow. Like Katie said, that the industry focuses on guys. Guys that, you know, have 30, 30 to 70 year old men that have guns and, you know, but what about the 21 year old who now is like, he's starting a family, lives in an, uh, you know, an area where he wants to be protect his family and he never had a gun. He doesn't have military experience. Like what right. about those people? Right. Those are the people that we focused on. Yeah. I, yeah. And yeah, and that's great because, you know, responsible gun ownership is so important. And, you know, as you said, because of everything that was going on during the pandemic, it became very, very scary. I mean, it wasn't just in the cities. I mean, right. gangs were coming out into the suburbs and, you know, people who, you know, again, never had a gun. We're like, oh, okay, this is scary. I need to do something. I'm going to go get a gun. And, you know, because you want to protect yourself. But again, you need to know how to use it properly. Right. So you, you know, Hello, you know, viewers and listeners, are you a military veteran or a military family member and looking to own your own business? If so, go to jdog.com and check out our two veteran focused franchises, jdog junk removal and hauling and jdog carpet cleaning and floor care. Our franchisees nationwide are always looking to hire fellow veterans and patriots. JDog is the world's largest military franchise system with hundreds of locations nationwide. We are nearly 90% veteran owned with the goal of reducing the veteran unemployment rate to under 1%. Check us out. Go to JDog.com to learn more. Now back to the podcast. So yeah, so that's really awesome. And I know that you guys have, you know, something special coming up. Um, but I, I want to ask you guys, um, we have somebody joining a special guest joining the podcast in a moment, but before we do that, I want to ask you each tactical treasure time. Mm -hmm. So Katie, what is your tactical treasure yeah. to share? Yeah. So for me, it was something that, um, I heard somebody say once that really stuck with me and I feel like it's the approach of how I look at life. You know, you always hear the phrase, you know, do you look at the glass half empty? or half full, yeah. but the reality is you can refill it. You know, the, the wow. glass is refillable. So it puts the person much more in control. It's right. kind of, you know, a reminder that I'm in control of my own life. I can make choices. I can say no, I can say yes to things that are meaningful to me. So I think it, it was just like a really good reminder of how to look at life. And I've looked at life that way ever since I heard that phrase. Oh, that's amazing. I, Cause you hear that phrase all the time, but what a different take on yes. it. I love it. Um, Greg, you, what is yeah. your tactical treasure? So Katie gave me this to read. My tactical <laughs> treasure is my wife, Katie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, my, it's my grandfather. And it, it always has been. Um, he's my hero. He passed away when I was in college. I li tried to live my life like him. Um, he was a very calm very collected person, loving, um, World War II veteran. And it wasn't, you know, actually until recently when I, there was a memorial for him that I did a little research and I was reading his discharge papers 
and enlistment papers. I didn't realize. I thought he was drafted in the World War II. He volunteered. He joined before uh, Pearl Harbor. Wow. Because I always remember that story him telling me when he got down to mm-hmm. Pearl Harbor, the, the ships were still smoking. And I couldn't like I couldn't comprehend the, the time frame. I was like, wow, you only right. have training for a couple months. But he was already in. So right. it, like that sense of like he had that call to service even mm-hmm. before like being drafted. And he was always I had to pull the, the, the stories out of him because I mean right. that generation's the whole generation's like that. They didn't want to talk about yeah. it. Right. Um, sure. But like just hearing the stories and the way he lived his life, I model my life after him. I, I strive to be like him every day. He is without a doubt the driving force to be who I am. He is why not only 9-11, you know, but my grandfather, I wanted to be in the military like him. I want to serve my country. I want to serve my community afterwards like he did. You know, like it's every step along the way. I want to be a grandfather like him. So, you know, Joseph Butler Sr. is the guy i you know, that's my tactical treasure that I think of every day. That's, a, that's amazing. That's, what a what a great legacy he uh, obviously impressed upon you. That's amazing. Uh, great tactical treasures, guys. Thank you. So joining the podcast uh, is Hank Gillen. Welcome, Hank. He is an Army veteran who is the director of the Office of Veteran Services at St. Joe's University, which he assumed after a distinguished career in military service, teaching, and project management. Welcome, Hank, and thank you for your service, sir. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. Yeah. So um, I, th- I think it's fair to mention that, Greg, you went through the EBV program at St. Joe's, and that's where you met Jerry, and that's your connection with Hank, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, so, Hank, can you just briefly just let us know what the St. Joe's program for and its entrepreneurship uh, v- uh, veterans, right? Of Business? course. Uh, okay. Yes. EBV stands for Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Veterans. Got uh, it. We're we're happy to be in our tenth year of providing veteran entrepreneurship uh, training for veterans. These are not St. Joseph students, uh, but but veterans who are looking to go in uh, into business for themselves. And so we've been doing this uh, for ten years now. We've trained over two hundred and forty uh, veterans in uh, the art and the science of entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's amazing. You guys are doing great work there. Um, And I know uh, Jerry often comes and talks about uh, if you'd like to own a franchise, (laughs) what that's all about, and just talks about business in general. Um, So yeah, you guys have an awesome program going on there. So however, um, the Mainline Armory and uh, St. Joe's EBV program are kind of joining forces. So you guys are doing a, you know, fundraiser. Um, so, uh, Greg, can you just, um, mention kind of how you've opened up the armory for this fundraiser? Sure. Well, first I just want to talk, like, if I can talk about my experience at EBV. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Please so do. I was, um, I forget how I got, you know, I got turned on to it because I, there's a group called the um, Greater Philadelphia and Veterans Network. Um, so every, I think it's every month we have a, a meeting and it's just veterans coming together. How can we help you? How can you help them? And Hank always came and, and talked about the EBV program. And so I got interested. I looked into it and I, and I got accepted into the St. Joe's. Um, I had to pay Hank a little bit of money under the table and he wound up getting me in. But um <laughs> But no, when I got there, um, you know, it, it's I think it's like three weeks or a month of like virtual uh, classroom work. And then it's a week in person at St. Joe's. And luckily, I lived right near St. Joe's. But I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Hank, like their room and board and all the food is paid for um, for EBV students, correct? That That's correct. There's no cost to participating uh, veterans in the program. And, and that includes for those who are not from the, uh, the, the greater Philadelphia area, uh, we put them up for the week and uh, pay their, their transportation yeah. to get here. So there was maybe three people from the area and the rest were from all over the place, D.C., yeah. you know, wow. Virginia. So I, I, I thought it was a really great program like that the veteran didn't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Um, as you go through it, you start you sit through all these lectures and you know group discussions and 
you know, you have these entrepreneurs like Jerry and all these people who started a business. And it, it's really like a lot of the stuff that was being taught. Now, Grant, I was already open by then for a year. So I went through the growing pains of building a build, right. business plan, all that stuff. So, but they hit on all these points that, yes, like that was stuff, that's legit. That's stuff that I had to deal with. And I was more for the majority of it sitting back going, wow, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and then, cause I had like, I'm looking over to my right and there's a guy who's sweating bullets. Like, Oh, I didn't even think about that. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and I was like, relax, man. Like just take this advice and you'll be all right. But <laughs> yeah. it was just, I mean, it was great because you have all these successful veteran owned businesses coming in and talking and it's not a lecture. Like, you know, do this. It's like, Hey, like, this is how my failures, like Jerry, it was, I, I <laughs> Jerry said he failed a couple times. Yeah. He handed. yeah. I know. And, yeah. And, it, and it's like, that's kind of like a relief to some of these, like, Hey, you might fail, but like what makes us better or makes us different is that we can move on past failure. So my okay. experience was, was great with that. And, um, and at the end, they have like a pitch com competition where like if you pitch your business, there's there's awards. So I was lucky enough to receive one of those awards. Um, again, I had to bribe the judges. So, I mean, again, it's a lot of private. <laughs> no, but um, so but but the reason why I came up with this, like Hank is one of the most selfless guys I've ever met. Like you meet him in person. He's always like, I, asking how you're, I mean, it's just and I, I like what the program stands for. And I'm finally in a position, I was always in the military, I had a boss, state police, I had a boss. I'm the boss now when my wife lets me. And <laughs> and I can finally give back to to organ like charities and veteran causes. And I was like, what better way than to to get, you know, to, to give back to this EBV, which I strongly believe in. I strongly believe it's helping veterans mm -hmm. you know have their dreams come come to life. So what I wound up doing was I, through other, you know, networks in the city, I met a couple other graduates from the EBV program. Um, and so what I came up with was like, hey, why don't we do like an all veteran vendor event at my place right. to raise money for Hank? Because Hank's always out there grinding, trying to get fun, you know, people to donate and, and stuff like that. And he, for the right. most part, I'm sure he's got his go to people that always contribute a little bit. But let's bring a little bit more recognition, a little more, like more exposure to the program. Um, mm -hmm. Let's get some people to to give some money and and and, to, and you know partake in a veteran event. See what this veteran community can do. So the event on the seventeenth is it's an all inclusive night. So you buy a ticket, and the the ticket you know covers um, shooting. Like uh, first, first and foremost, you get shooting, and there will be some instruction. After you're done shooting, we're going to have food provided by Farina Pasta and Noodle, uh, a gentleman, Dan Lee. Um, he's going to cater the event. Um, there's going to be uh, adult beverages by Will Le Lever, Lover. I don't know if I, I'm butchering his name, but he owns Copper Bonnet Distillery. Mm -hmm. And then Joey Mack, um, he owns the Mobile Cigar Lounge. He's going to come and hand right. roll cigars. So the I ticket covers, it. yeah, the ticket covers food, a drink. You can always buy more like bottles or, you know, because he's going to have some of the, the stuff that they make present or more cigars and we'll have raffles. Um, so it's just going to be a big, like fun event where everybody can just hang around, eat some good food, have some drinks, talk, you know, tell fake stories about their military service. <laughs> you know, I'm going to meet a lot of Navy SEALs that night. I know it. But um, <laughs> that, that's my ongoing joke. Everybody's a Navy SEAL. Everybody's um <laughs> But but the well, end yeah yeah <laughs> but, but the end the end the end game the 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 goal the mission of that event is to raise money so that it's a little bit easier on Hank they can afford more students to come and do the program and just really help it out and if it's successful it's something that we can do annually to help Hank out so it's our right. way all the veterans were that are partaking in this group we're doing everything at cost um, so every ticket sale every donation every raffle uh ticket everything's going to ebv all after all expense like you know all, all proceeds oh wow that's great so um is this 
just for veterans to sign up or can civilians partake or how about women? It's open like to if, everyone. If wanted to come, could I buy a ticket? And absolutely. Come and... Absolutely. Okay. And if you've never shopped before, we're going to have like a 30 minute session at the beginning, separate from the group of, Hey, let's get you comfortable at least like it's a little training session to get them comfortable to shoot. So it's open, oh, it's great. open to everybody. And there's several ways that you can contribute to this. You can come in person and enjoy the evening. You can buy a ticket and donate it to what I'm going to do is grab anybody who wants, who's like across the country that wants to donate a ticket. I'll have these tickets set aside and give them out to active military, uh, guardsmen, reservists, or veterans that, that I'll give them out so that they can enjoy the event. Uh, right. the, the other way is um, to give a, a, a product. And um, if you're a veteran owned business that offers a service or a product, if you want to, you know, be a sponsor and donate a raffle item, please contact me because we'll, we'll gladly take that and all the proceeds from that will go to, to EBV. And the last way is a monetary donation. Um, right. Pat, you know, we'll, we'll give the link uh, or hopefully the link will be, you know, under like your podcast or whatever the, where, you can donate directly to the EBV program. And that way it's not just going to St. Joe's earmarked for EBV. There's a way that like that it's directed solely to, to EBV. So there's a lot of ways that, you know, you can help out this organization, even if you're not regional and you can't make it, uh, if you still want to help out, there's, there's ways to do that. That's great. Uh, I love it. So um, Hank, uh, how much will, how much will this fundraiser benefit uh, EBV? Well, it, it's it's tremendous. First of all, of course, I was I was very humbled when when Greg approached me with the idea and said, "Hey, we, you know, we 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 got together and and a bunch of us would like to do this for you because the program is uh, you know it 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 we we always feel that it belongs right here at St. Joseph's University. It's uh, with concept of uh, Jesuit education. The philosophy of the university is is uh, being with and for others, and and so here we are in helping veterans uh, to a, achieve their uh, their life ambitions, and so so we're very happy to have the program here at St. Joe's. It's terrific when we get support uh, like this because it uh, that it does enable us to uh, expand the number of people we can make the op uh, the opportunity available for and and such. But but of course also it's what it what it represents is the uh, the veteran business ecosystem. As Greg mentioned, everybody, all, right. the, all of the, the people providing uh, the, the support and the, uh, the, the food, the beverage, the, uh, the cigars, uh, the, the, the rage itself, we're, we're all veterans and we're helping each other. We're, we're promoting each other that anybody who uh, participates with the, uh, with a raffle item or, or anything else uh, that the, the response from the, the uh, alumni community within the, uh, uh, EBV has been has been very excited. They said, "Oh, this is a great idea. I love uh, love the idea." But we can we can promote the other things that veteran uh, business owners are doing, and that and that uh, reinforcing that that network, that tribe that is veteran entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, that's great. This has been amazing. So I'm very excited for this event. Um, and thank you so much. Greg and Katie for coming on and, and just sharing all that you did and uh, introducing us to the Mainline Armory. Yeah, if you are in the uh, Valley Forge, Malvern, Montgomery County, Delaware County area, Mainline Armory, you guys are located in Malvern, Pennsylvania, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the event will be taking place. And we'll make sure that everybody will uh, have uh, information about the links and how they can go to Mainline Armory and support. And also we'll do a shout out to the EBV program. We'll get a link going uh, for you, Hank, if people just want to donate um, to the Veteran Entrepreneurship boot camp. So um, thank you so much, all Tracy. of you for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, Tracy, let me, let me yeah. put, I'm going to put Hank on the spot. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> So Hank, we had to give our tactical treasures either a motto or or you know an item or something meaningful to us that makes us who we are and what we strive. Mine was my grandfather. Katie's was a, a a saying that someone told her. What drives you to to continue doing all this veteran work that you that you do so well? 
Well, it's, uh, you know, it, it's great. Uh, Tracy gives us the opportunity to uh, to share with the, the the greater community about what's going on. I mean, certainly, I I just have have been rejuvenated. Uh, my my service is is twenty five years ago now, but uh, having reconnected yeah. with the with the veteran uh, community, it just uh, it's invigorating uh, to to work with us all. And and uh, we're not monolithic. We're you know everybody's everybody's in a different position and the and just being able to get up and help people who said you know i think i'm drawn towards entrepreneurship and help them to discern whether or not that's the right path and then be successful if that is what they continue with just uh is is one of those things that uh that makes it exciting to get up and come to work in the morning so it's uh i, I i'm just uh thrilled to be to be connected with those uh fellow uh, fellow veterans who who have served our country that's great. That's great. Good answer. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Great answer. Tracy, yeah. I will I will also say that if anybody who's listening to this podcast knows of a veteran who is thinking about starting their own business, it's going to be a good opportunity for them to network, for them to find a battle buddy as they try to embark on entrepreneurship and hear more about the program since so many graduates and alumni are going to be there that night. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for doing this shout out. Yeah. Any veteran who's interested in starting their own business, um, check out St. Joe's EBV program. It's really awesome, awesome work that yep. Hank is doing. Thanks, everybody, for coming on and uh, look forward to the event. Uh, I hope it's successful. Great to have a lot of veterans getting together and shooting and telling stories and having a great time for a good cause. So thank Thanks, you so Tracy. much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for joining us for this amazing Tactical Treasures podcast, where we've just finished up an awesome conversation with Greg and Katie Butler, who are Army veterans. And also, we had joining the podcast a special guest, Hank Gillen, also an Army veteran and the director of the Office of Veteran Services at St. Joe's University. So, Gade, uh, Katie and Greg are the owners of Mainline Armory, which is a luxury indoor shooting range located in Malvern, Pennsylvania. The facility features 21 lanes, an elegant members' lounge with a cigar area, two training classrooms, and a retail area. It offers members and walk-ins a unique training experience with the latest industry technology and a welcoming space to entertain friends, family, and clients. They provide classes for all skill levels from beginners to experts and are open seven days a week. They are hosting a fundraiser at the Mainline Armory, which is located at 63 Ton Road, in Malvern, PA, on October 17th from 5 to 8.30 p.m. to benefit St. Joe's University Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities. The ticket price per guest is $125, and this includes shooting, food, drinks, and cigars, which will be provided by veteran-owned businesses. To learn more about the Armory, sign up for classes, and get more information about the fundraising events, you can go to MainlineArmory.com or to get directly to uh, the fundraising event and purchase tickets, you can go to MainlineArmory forward slash fundraisers.com. St. Joe's University Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Veterans. It's a program that is designed specifically to provide the tools, education, and mentorship necessary for post-9-11 veterans to start or grow their own businesses. To learn more about that program, how you can get involved, how you can donate, and how you can apply for the program, you can go to sju.edu forward slash EBV. Again, thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, you can find Tactical Treasures Podcast on all your favorite podcast streaming platforms, as well as Vet TV, American Grit, and our dedicated YouTube channel. We are now airing on Reese Across America Radio on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you missed that, please join us Saturday for the Encore at 1 p.m. Eastern. 
You can also find Reese Cross America Radio on the iHeartRadio app, the Odyssey app, and the TuneIn app. We are also proud to share that our JDog Foundation is a Reese Across America sponsorship group for each $17 Veterans Wreath that you sponsor, $5 goes directly back to the J-Dog Foundation, whose mission is to prevent veteran suicide and heal veterans' mental health and PTSD. You can donate right now at reeseacrossamerica.org slash J-Dog. Again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again on another podcast real soon. Bye-bye now.